All right, you got one of these. Want to know how to adjust it? Let's take a look. All right, so some guys say you can adjust this thing with the valve cover on and somehow you can reach around there and get a socket wrench on the bottom of that thing. So this valve cover is like right here, okay? I can't get my hands in there to do it at all. So if you're like me, you might decide to, well, do a little more work and make it easier on yourself. Um, so what I did is I removed the valve cover, a couple of little pointers on that. I'm just going to kind of go over some pointers and I'm going to show you how to adjust this thing. If you're going to take the valve cover off to do this, um, which it's really not that bad. It seems like a big deal because it has the injectors going through here. Uh, when you take off these nuts on the, uh, for the injectors, when you take off the injectors, you, uh, take off your injectors and leave them all together like this. See, I got them all still in order. The reason I have them all in order is because if you don't put them back in order, you're going to have to reprogram the injectors to the computer. It's just coding. I think I got a video out on that, how to code your injectors for the uh, TDI 2.0 CBEA, CJAA. It's really CBE, CB, CJA, but everybody puts the A on the end because that's the horsepower. But anyway, CBE, CJA on there to code your injectors. You have to code them if you get them out of order because they have to match the, the values that the computer has because um, there's fuel amounts that go through them and it's just variance, you know, that, it's weird. Anyway, it's Volkswagen. It sucks. Yeah, okay. So you got to do that. So, taking the valve cover off. You just take off the fuel rail. Uh, you... These little clips here, what I do is I take a screwdriver and I pry down just a little bit on this thing and then I push it closed and then I pull it off and then you'll find out this little thing right here, you can just put a screwdriver in there and tip, let me show you a little more. I just put a screwdriver in like this, bend that just a little bit, try not to break that thing, push it closed and then lift, pull it out and it'll usually come right off. It takes a little bit of wiggling sometimes. Sorry about the wind. That's what all that wonderful noise is in the background. So, this is my second time doing this because there was another video on YouTube. And uh, I think they gave incorrect information. So, let me see if I can give you the correct information. I got this from the TDI Club forum. Uh, I don't see anywhere else to get it. So, hopefully, this is my second time taking the valve cover off. Really, it only takes about an hour and a half to get the whole valve cover off. Um, you know, maybe a little less, maybe an hour. Especially the second time, it probably took me less than an hour. Uh, but to get the injectors out, what I do is I take a little pry bar and I put it on here, on the top of this stud, okay? And I put it under the injector a little bit. And what I do is wiggle the injector around a bunch of times and then pull up gently push it down up and down and we'll move it around and then all of a sudden it'll come loose if they come out uh, you don't need the slide hammer that the factory says you need um, I didn't find that but it is be very careful with them you don't want to break them they're not cheap so gently pry them up a little bit and then wiggle it of course do that at your own risk if you break an injector don't call me I'm just I'm telling you how I do it you can do it however you want but that's how I did it and I got them out no problem twice so, uh, these little things here, these little things go this direction. So see how it's, you can see that, how this thing is shaped. Make sure it is, this part is towards the bottom, okay, when you put them back on. That is if you're taking the valve cover off. If you're doing it without the valve cover off, I have no idea how you're going to get it. That would be for a person with very small hands somebody very agile which I am not so what the guy what one guy says on YouTube is he says with a mighty vac which we have one right here of course I would definitely recommend buying one of these this is the cheap one from Harbor Freight it's not cheap it's actually pretty good quality I thought I don't know how long it's gonna last we'll find out in a few months right so 
what it says on there, and there's two different things I can go to pressure. So I'm going to put it on pressure for a second, and I'm going to depress the get the pressure out of it. See if I can get it back to zero. Is it going to zero? Okay. Oh, it's at five inch pounds. I don't want it there. Only at zero. Okay. Here's an easy way. Pull the line off. Okay, zero. We'll bring it back in right now. So basically what how this works is as you gain more vacuum, that arm right here gets longer and longer and longer. And what a guy says is get it at the maximum length, okay, and then have this thing be at the as down as far as it goes, and that will give you the proper adjustment. Uh didn't work for me. So I'm just saying that adjustment did not work for me. Um, what you're trying to do, and I'll tell you what you're trying to do, is you're trying to get uh, the actual boost. If you go on your on your Ross Tech, you look up your actual boost, and the boost uh, that it thinks it's supposed to have, and they're supposed to be the same. So there's a way to check both those values. Um, on the computer that's why it throws a code and won't let you drive it starts blinking that uh the uh what are they called you know what i'm talking about i think it starts blinking a weird little thing on there and it's basically telling you there's no boost and it's in a limp mode so so i was getting limp mode after i did it that way what the other way that they say to do it is this was on the uh the tdi club forum is well, let's see how am I going to do this at about three pounds? So as you as this on vacuum, see this says right here says vacuum this way, pressure this way. Okay, this little switch here. So I'll put it on vacuum, and then you, as you get to about three pounds, you'll start to see the arm just start to move. There it is. It just started to move. Okay, that should be all the way this way. Now that's what I'm finding out. Well, let's see if it works. I have no idea if it's going to work or not. I've gotten this whole thing apart twice. Maybe you guys will learn from my mistake. Or maybe you'll learn and put something in the comments. Maybe you already know. So, anyway, that's what I, I'm doing is it says when it's at three, just starts to move when it's at 3.3 .3 pounds, it's just starting to go down. It's just, just starting to move. So that's between three and five inch pounds of vacuum. So inches of vacuum, not pounds. Three, three to five inches of vacuum, it's just starting to go down. It just started to move. So that should be all the way up. Let's try it. Okay. So I'll loosen up this one, and I'm going to loosen up that one, and I'm going to find out where this actuating arm, right here, you can see the actuating arm. Let me get you a little closer. Yeah, right, right there. The little actuator, right there. This little thing, you can see this little arm goes inside there. Um, where that thing is at the top is where it's supposed to be right now. So it's really, I mean, another forum says that uh, you should leave the little this nut in place and then measure and put it on the same way i replaced my turbo cartridge um, i had a place to do it so it's going to be in a different position uh, you know they take this apart it gets clocked you know it can be slid around and it could be clocked a little bit different so there's no way that i'm going to know that it's exactly in the same position if you're replacing just this thing okay if you're replacing let me get you back a little bit if you're replacing this thing right here okay and you're going for like for like you got the same turbo and you're just changing this like for like leave that nut in the same place what they say and measure from the, here to here and make sure it's an exact with the new one exactly in the same place use a you know a micrometer and measure from the tip of here to the end of there make sure it's in the same place that's what they say to do and they say that works and then what you do is when you run it again you go on your Ross Tech or your VADCOM, you 
pull up the two values, you put them on a graph, and they should be mirrored together um, within a percentage. There's a, a few percentage, but I don't know how much that is. I'm just guessing. I'm telling you there's a percentage-wise between those two that's acceptable, and it has to be in that range. So, but here's how I'm going to do it. I am going to, again, I'm going to loosen up this, loosen up that. I'm going to bring this rod all the way up, and I'm going to set... And then when I find out where that position is, where this thing is all the way up, then I'm going to tighten these two down, and that's where I'm going to set it. And then we're going to drive it and see how it works. Talk to you guys a little later. Well, I think I moved it about two turns, maybe two and a half. So, God, if that's all it needs, that's crazy. You know, you two can, and when you get done with this, you know, you two can join me in the warm and wonderful thoughts of strangling the engineer who made this car. Or maybe if you're even a little more like me, you'll be thinking about dreaming about that hammer bash contest on your car when you're done. The price to pay for good gas mileage. Let's just hope it fixes it. This is my second time. I've had the engine out of this car a couple times. Um, you know, transmission clutches, all that stuff. Pretty much done everything to this thing. Changed the turbo. Yeah, and it was you know, it was because the oil pump failed. You know, that was wonderful. So, it's kind of put me through a little bit. So, maybe you can understand why I'm where I am on this thing. Talk to you guys a bit later. All right, so here's what I found on this turbo when I... Got it all apart and put it back together. Um, I did, I was able to get at the way that I measured it, remember, was um, I put the Mighty Vac on here, okay, and I ran it till it just started to open. And what I did is I moved this lever all the way up. This one here is frozen. There's veins inside here that need to be clean. This, you could actually take this, this apart right here and then dunk it in uh, some of that evapo rust or something like that for a couple days and let it heal itself and probably as long as this thing moves easily you have to take up take the turbo cartridge apart and then make sure that the veins all open and close that's all part of rebuilding it if you're gonna ever try to rebuild your turbo you know i would i don't know i don't, I don't know if i'd do it um it's it's just I, I professional people that do it all the time they have balancing machines things like that that's the way i would go suggest but you put this thing on here like this okay and when this thing's all the way up okay and you put the mighty vac on here okay and you bring it to just just barely starts to move so it's about five pounds three pounds in there of uh, three inches of vacuum you start to move it okay that's where it is all the way up that was the most accurate way i could test it another guy says to make it all the way, take your Mighty Vac and open this thing up and you know run this thing up to 15 pounds all the way out. I'm not gonna say he's wrong because he might be right. Um, all the way out and it should be all the way this direction. So, and, and I found that it's only maybe about two turns difference on this screw from either one of those settings. So in my opinion, really what I think it's supposed to be is that when this thing, this vacuum motor is all the way extended, it's supposed to be touching here. And when it's all the way ret retracted, it's supposed to be up against there. So that, um, I think maybe both are right. You know, I don't know for sure. Um, but I will tell you that Trying to adjust this thing when it's on here is very difficult to do um, when it's on the car because it, the valve cover is in the way. Um, if you were going to try and do it, you know, like if you were trying to adjust it, I would say more than likely you have another issue. Um, if it's, it just needs to be in range. You know, it needs to be pretty close in that range to where when it's all the way extended, it's it's fully extended this way, and it's all the way retracted, it's fully retracted that way um, with this thing that's the way I'm looking at it that's why what I could see so
anyway, whatever you want to try, you can try. Um, the, the other thing I was going to tell you is that if you were to take the vacuum motor, let me do it real quick. Well, I, don't know if I, I think I put it away. Maybe not. So if you needed to make an adjustment, you could take these three screws out, take your vacuum motor or your vacuum actuator, and as you gain more vacuum, see what it does? The rod gets longer and longer. And take it out so it's all the way out. Okay, so if you had to just make a couple of turns, maybe you got it just a little bit off. Um, you, what you're really intending to do is go on your VCDS, and you need a VCS to, VCDS to do this, and you graph the actual boost and the projected boost. Um, and, and just rev the engine up, and they should be very close to each other as they go on the graph. My car was having a little other problem. I've got lots of other problems with it. I can get into that, but um, I had a lot of multiple problems at the same time because I wasn't just trying to fix one thing. Um, so mine actually, after I was done, the, the both of the graphs went together on the VCDS. Okay, but if you were get get access, if you want to get access to this, okay, you go ahead and lengthen this thing all the way, and what you'll do is. I think what it will do is kind of lift this thing up so you can get a wrench in there and turn it. I would not try to install it that way. I would take off the valve cover. It's just a whole lot easier. But um, you, you could probably gain a little bit of access through the top if you had all three of these screws out and you lift it and it would lift this thing up, you know, about an inch. Then you could probably get a wrench in there, maybe make a wrench to fit on there. You know, take a wrench and actually bend it with a torch and uh, or weld a little piece on it and make your own little like a uh, if you know what a, a vacuum uh, a, a distributor wrench looks like they're kind of like this and it goes up and you can do that and put it on there and then try and twist it one or two turns any more than that I really would just like I said take the valve cover off and try to get it in it's gonna be really hard to see if where you're at like that so anyway that's my opinion on this thing. I, you know, do I know exactly how it's done? No, I, I don't, you know, but mine worked. After I was done doing it that way, when I went as I went, you know, to where it just started to move, and then I did, and I went ahead and uh, adjusted it so that this thing was all the way up, and this was on at that time, and it, and my boost matches. It's pretty, pretty close. So it's close, it's within range. That's all you have to get is get it within range. So it's, you know, and, and it was only one or two turns different than doing it the other way. So it might have been right before, but I think this thing was bad. Every part that I got in the other engine was bad. So I can't really tell you for sure if that was it or not. So anyway, I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching and I'd like to see your comments. And uh, thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe.